Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Another episode of On Finding Peace, and I am Chris Shea, your host, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical everyday tips that can help us find the inner peace for which we seek. And I have uh, with us today, uh, very pleased to have with us today, a guest, uh, Natalie Burridge, who's uh, working on the 100-day project. So uh, we're going to be speaking with her and find out what this is, how we can get involved, and how it can help us in our daily lives. So welcome. It's great to have you with us. Yes. Thanks for having me, Chris. I'm really excited to be here and share with you guys about the 100 Day Project and really anything else that we get into. Sounds excellent. Uh, I I really appreciate it. Uh, So if you can let the audience know a bit about yourself and what it is that you do. Yeah. So currently I am a yoga studio owner. I've owned a beautiful yoga studio here in Columbus, Ohio for the last five years. I've been a yoga teacher for seven years, and for the last year and a half, I've really been um, focusing on uh, transformational coaching. I mm. and so really where I'm focusing at professionally uh, is really supporting people in transforming their lives from the inside out. So really, people come to me when they want to really love themselves. So a lot with self love or, you know, change their financial uh, reality, going from scarcity to abundance. And then of course, you know, any and everything in between. And I just, I absolutely love what I do. And one day I was inspired on Instagram through a post I saw one of my friends make of the 100 Day Project. And I was like, oh, I'm going to jump in on this. So I am a person with many interests, but anything that really leads to bettering people I love. Excellent. So how was that transition for you from the teaching of the yoga and moving into the transformation, you know, of helping people find the peace or, or is that just a natural process of one to the other? Yeah, for me, it's really natural. Uh, I have always often on joked with my friends that I'm the most passionate yogi that I know. (laughs) So, (laughs) so, uh, You know, and and really, I found my my current, you know, energetic, emotional home and transformation because it requires a lot of intensity and passion, at least from my experience of it. So, you know, for anyone listening, I kind of equate it to like Tony Robbins, you know, that's, that's, I guess, one person a lot Mm -hmm. of people know. And, uh, and it's really just naturally who I be, you know, I was always the friend that people would call for, you know, grounded advice. And although coaching isn't advice giving, you know, supporting someone and uncovering their truth and also just having great insight, you know, they're very connected. So for me, it was just a natural next step that I uh, probably had been showing up as coach in my yoga classes, (laughs) (laughs) uh, you know, than than what I realized. And uh, yes, it was just a really cool thing to just naturally give myself permission to, to go into. Is it safe to assume you're still involved with the yoga? Oh yeah. So I still, yeah, I still own the studio. In fact, tomorrow morning, it's a Saturday morning. I'm waking up at six thirty to go teach two classes. I have a team of six teachers. Uh, so I don't teach that much, but I still currently teach and yoga is such a part of who I am. It's just so integral to who I am. And, uh, it's so supportive and finding peace and just really, uh, letting the fears melt away. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely still in there. Nice. Because The way that, you know, I've seen what yoga is and how it really can help to transform people, you know, I I really see that as, you know, that natural lead in for what you're doing now, but also kind of always been doing that, you know, that for people practicing yoga, I'm sure helped to transform them into feeling more uh, at peace and happier within themselves. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. For me, and the results that I really saw in the people around me at my studio, I feel like although yoga can absolutely be intense 100%, you know, whether sometimes physically or emotionally, for me, that path of development or spirituality, how you want to call it, 
was always um, a little more subtle, whereas the context of transformation, well, I guess I should go back and clarify subtle. By subtle, I mean someone can take it at their own pace. You know, you don't have mm-hmm. to necessarily, when you start yoga, do it two hours a day for six days a week. Obviously, that would be a certain pace of transformation versus someone who's going to, you know, go over to India and just be immersed, immersed in it for three months. And also the person who maybe takes class once a week, you know, you can kind of really take it at your own pace. Whereas the context of transformation, which I first entered uh, being a student, you know, it's very much in your face. The ego is going to be confronted and um, the coaches and, and the trainer that's leading the training is very much setting the pace. So like, you know, you're, you're on the roller coaster, whether you want to be or not, <laughs> it's going. <laughs> so they both exactly. do things, but the pace is very different. Right. Yeah. Cause you know, my experiences with uh, yoga and I'm just on the fringes, uh, you know, it, it really does bring up different things within the person. And when you start looking at some of those emotions or some of those thoughts, you know, I can really see where, you know, that that would help to hopefully propel you into making that transformation. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the mantras at uh, our, at the yoga studio, it's a big space for self-love and body love because those were two of my main challenges, you know, about a decade ago or a decade and a half ago. And once I was able to really journey through those and really just no longer struggle with those, you know, that was a huge gift to give to other people. So I really wanted the, the, the yoga studio space to be one over where people could explore that and feel safe and have their own journey with that, or of course, anything else. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's absolutely, you know, uh, can be just a very, very lifelong transformational path for sure. It still is, you know, when I do it, but it's, it's just, it, it's a, in a different way, which is super cool. Well, our, our whole lives, uh, at least I believe, you know, is one long transformational journey. You know, I, I don't think anybody ever reaches that pinnacle and says, you know, I'm here and I've made it. That is so true. That's so true. I, uh, I come and go consciously, you know, with that thought, you know, there's times that actually I was just having a birthday breakfast with one of my friends who's a shaman. And uh, we were actually talking about that this this morning. She's in a certain place with her journey with relationships and she's like, Mm -hmm. and she's super self-aware. So she's like, maybe I'm being, you know, really authentic or maybe I have a fear of intimacy, you know? And, and I think sometimes such a level of self-awareness can almost be this like double-edged sword to where you can really start to doubt yourself. And I certainly have noticed that with myself in the past and what we're sharing, you know, when we kept coming back to was just like, you know, it's just where you're at in your journey, like, and that's okay. And we all have our own journeys and our own paces and, one of the biggest gifts is not getting down on yourself or hard on yourself for where you're at in the journey. And then of course, you know, just, it's going to be ongoing, just like you said. And, and I like how you keep emphasizing that about, you know, going at your pace, you know, cause all too often when I've been working with people either in formal counseling or with the life coaching that, you know, we, we all want it. I guess it's part of our culture. You know, you, you want it now. But, you know, how often I'm asked that question, how long should this take or why is it taking this long or when are we going to have, you know, whatever result. So I I really like how you keep emphasizing the at your own pace. You know, we're we're all individuals and I I don't believe there is a a time frame for, you know, when are we going to transform into like the, the next step or the next level? Absolutely. I mean, one of the reasons why, I, I now I'm saying that is because it used to be one of the things that I, that I struggled with. And, you know, and I, and I definitely fell into that category of like, you know, I want it now and let's mm-hmm. do it tomorrow. And just, you know, being very, uh, I like to call it spiritually impatient. <laughs> so of course then, you know, the universe had to give me many lessons to instill that patience in me to where now I very much am the one telling my clients, like, Hey, you know, it took you 50 years to get here. What, you know, you're doing amazing. Like give yourself credit for what you've done the last six months. Like you're not going to rewrite 50 years and three months and then like never come back to it. Like it's a journey now until you move forward. But, but yeah, I just feel that, uh, you know, if someone is able to really give themselves credit for where they're at, knowing that they're doing their best, 
also like coupling that with the willingness to, to still shift and grow and change. And then like really believing that the universe has your back, like life was good for you and that things can get better. Like that is such a secret ingredient to like peace and happiness. At least I have found that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and for me, it is part of that, you know, the more that I can be true to myself and to who I am and then reflect that out to the world really leads more into a peaceful feeling because I, I'm, I'm in sync with everything at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So what are um, some of the techniques that you would use? You know, somebody's coming to you, uh, not for the yoga, but more for that transformation that, you know, that you would lead them into finding that peace. You know, what, what are some things people can do? Yeah. So of course, you know, when I first meet with someone and every session is a lot of listening. Um, and I always start with, you know, where does someone want to, want to go? Like what's their end result, you know, and where are they beginning from and whether or not someone comes to me about self love from my point of view, it always includes self love. You know, to me, self love is a, is a, is a journey in really knowing that you're worth it, knowing mm-hmm. that you deserve it. And to me, that's a part of achieving any goal, whether it's, you know, in your love life, in your career, finances, whatever it may be, you know? And so a lot of the work I end up doing is belief work because what I find to be really effective are some tools through access consciousness. So, you know, I have many certifications, everything from like Makruna Reiki master to, uh, I've gotten, um, uh, some certifications in access consciousness and everything in between. And, mm-hmm. and I also as a consumer have done like many energy healings and shamanic journeying and like all kinds of stuff. So I have like all these like cool, like tools to pull from depending on who's in front of me and what really is going to be like supportive to them now. But really, no matter what, when someone comes in, uh, to me, no matter their goal, there's one common thread, and that is somewhere along the way, there's beliefs that they've adopted that got in the way between them and who they really uh, want to be and who they really truly can be, like their authentic self. And so there's a lot of uh, re- rewiring as far as that. And it's really cool because the tools I use from access consciousness are actually pretty fast acting. So uh, it's a lot of questions and then clearing statements, the clearing statements just basically delete the belief. And of course, you know, we know that we're many, many layers as, as humans. And just because we don't one belief doesn't mean that there's not 250 underneath that one (laughs) that, that created that one, but it's just really cool to see like the layers being peeled back of, 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 you know, that person. And, um, so it's always belief work and then also action, you know, cause I, I can also, you know, see, see people where they get so involved in changing their inner world and that becomes fun for them and mm-hmm. almost safe for them because, you know, they, they forget that it actually like where things actualize and are created is through taking outer action. So a lot of times it's a lot of heavy emphasis on rewiring their beliefs, and then also like, okay, what action are you taking? You know, cause that can also uh, really be a different training ground for, for someone's personality because, you know, interacting in the, in the outer world with, let's say you are going for a new job and you're interviewing, like that's going to, you know, bring up other, you know, someone's like limiting beliefs because you're interacting with new people and what do they think of me? Like fear of judgment and whatever comes up from someone's ego so the action is always incredibly, incredibly powerful. And as simple as those two things sound, that's just, that's just where the work lies. And I know that you know this. I mean, that's just where mm-hmm. a lot of challenges lie. And what I've also been finding, and I don't know if it's true on uh, your part as well, but really trying to break through that idea that you do deserve this. And there's, there's so many people that you know seem to recognize the – need for change, but don't feel that they're deserving of that change mm-hmm. or deserving of, a, you know, a better life. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, you know, that's one of the things that connects back to self-love, you know, and of course it's, you know, I, I, I share with my clients, you know, what I've journeyed through and, and there's many different viewpoints on love and how people have journeyed with it. But really from my point of view, 
you know, love, you know, sometimes might be soft and supportive and encouraging. And sometimes love says, Hey, this isn't working. I need to get it together now. And I need massive change in every area. And I get to let go of five toxic relationships by the end of the day, (laughs) you know? Yeah. You know, love is a very, to me, you know, the self love game is a very, very, uh, actually one of the most powerful places to really be in because at the end of the day, when you're dedicated to yourself, which I encourage people to be dedicated themselves first and foremost, so they can really create quality relationships with other people. You know, sometimes that means that maybe friendships are going to let go of, maybe intimate relationships need to shift. Maybe, you know, you need to change jobs because you realize that you've settled or you've been lying to yourself and those things aren't congruent with loving yourself, you know? Right. And and that's one of the things that I've been finding throughout the years that when I started in my career, it, it was very much focused on helping people get over their addictions to drugs, alcohol, uh, uh, and the like. And, you know, one of the things we would always tell them is, you know, you're going to need to change certain people. You need to change certain things you're doing, you know, maybe your job, maybe where you live, whatever it might be. And then, you know, I really start to realize that within those changes, you know, people really come up and, uh, you know, find more of a piece to themselves. So then, you know, I start to say, well, then even for people who are not going through this process of addiction, maybe if we start making some of those changes in their lives, they also will find some of that peace. Yeah, absolutely. I am such a believer in, um, Really, really one of my current themes, but it's been a theme off and on and definitely one that I live by, but it's really even uh, been highlighted more lately is being unapologetic for what you, what you truly desire. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because there's so much, I feel like in our society, the collective consciousness where, you know, we're taught indirectly somehow, some way, you know, about people pleasing and putting others first and not wanting to hurt each other's feelings. And I'm not, you know, in any way, you know, encouraging people to be like selfish and mean and, you know, right. it's, it's all about them. But I find that like when people have a really healthy sense of self relationship, they have awesome boundaries. They are able to say no because some things just require a no, you know, they own their yeses. And when they choose to show up for something, they can choose to show up, you know, fully mind, body, and spirit. And really be all in something. And I don't necessarily feel like that's, that's what's reflected as a, at large in our society. And so that's something that, you know, I always encourage people like, you know, really own you and your desires and where you're going and, you know, not letting people like guilt you into why you're changing or what's been different, you know, and I've even experienced that, you know, as I've continued to grow, there's certain relationships, you know, friendships that I've distanced myself from and, you know, and I like to encourage really clear communication and, you know, I will just share with someone directly like, Hey, like I've been really clear about like what I'm creating in my life and what I want to surround myself with and who I want to surround myself with. And I love you. And you're also choosing to not choose this. So right now I'm not going to invest in you. Mm -hmm. And that's her choice. You know, like if you want to come back and meet me in a different place, cool. But right now I'm really clear. And I think that if more people uh, really practice that, we'd have a lot more happy, healthy humans walking around. <laughs> I, and, and I totally agree. Uh, you know, and, and I, I think that that is, you know, one of the problems with, with our society is it, it's not emphasizing boundaries anymore. And it's looking at that opposite, you know, that if you set the boundaries, if you really focus on self-care, then you're being selfish. And so, you know, there's so many people then who aren't doing that and that's leading them away from any type of inner peace or happiness. Absolutely. So where does this 100 day project fit into all this that you're working on? Yeah, so. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is a fascinating concept. <laughs> yeah, so I'm be totally honest as to why. Well, so I'll, I'll share with you first, like why I started it and then actually why I started the group or why I actually chose to participate rather, because I certainly didn't come up with a hundred day project. <laughs> so I was scrolling through Instagram, probably about three weeks ago, and I saw one of my friends, uh, she has a, um, she's on Instagram as Thank Yoga, 
And she was posting that she, you know, chose to be a part of this hundred day project. And she was going to do a podcast every single day for a hundred days. And the moment she said that I was like, really inspired, really excited, totally lit up. And I'm the kind of passion person where I, when I start something, I have a lot of passion, a lot of motivation, which is awesome to start something with. Mm -hmm. And I've also witnessed myself the last seven years being an entrepreneur and a business owner that I'll be honest, sometimes commitment's been in a gap for me, you know, and letting the the commitment be the fuel long-term rather than the excitement, which totally Mm -hmm. goes away after you over being excited about something. And so I was like, I'm going to do this. And I was like, I know myself (laughs) (laughs) and I'll stop if I don't have accountability. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, cool, I'm going to create a win, win, win. I'm going to create a Facebook group because this is fun. I'm going to, you know, invite other people in it because that'll support them. It'll certainly support me. You know, because I'm like, I can't start the group and then not do it. That's lame. (laughs) You know, and then Mm -hmm. I was like, and then maybe also I'll develop some relationships out of it. And maybe, you know, there'll be some coaching clients in the future, you know. But really, I started that Facebook group because I was like, I know myself and I will not do 100 days if eyes are not watching. (laughs) Mm. Yes. Yeah. The the accountability piece. (laughs) And, you know, and I wanted to share that because I think there's so many times there can be like misconceptions with people who are like coaches or healers or any kind of person in in this type of role where somehow like we still don't have our own things to journey with. And it's like, oh my God, are you kidding me? I'm human too, you know? Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, we haven't found that pinnacle, you know, (laughs) we we just know what's gotten us to this point. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, so I'm on day, I want to say 19. I'll be honest, I was in Mexico about a week ago. And there were a couple of days of where I was like, oh, I didn't post. Okay, I'm choosing not to post. And actually tomorrow I'll get in the group. And I will totally just be like, hey guys, I didn't post. I'm going to make a video about this because I just learned a really big lesson. And so it's been really cool for me to be like that vulnerable and also Mm -hmm. like not go into like, oh my God, like, you know, like just self beat up or self judgment, you know, things that like I've really practiced like, like letting go of and and not actively practicing and you know and then also you know being like I was on vacation and I did actually not want to post tonight and am I currently okay with this in my life actually I am so what's that about and then turning it into a larger lesson of reflection for me and where I'm at in my journey and then also being able to share that with my audience right and you know that Facebook group which I'm a part of and um, you know, saw the post you're talking about. And, you know, I, I, I like that because there is that accountability. And I know for myself, that's where, and, and we'll go back to what you're saying about your own pace. Mm-hmm. I know right now in the whole midst of how busy I am, I can't make that like a hundred day commitment at the moment, mm-hmm. but I need that inspiration that, that hey, I'm going to need to do this. So, you know, part of me joining the group is, all right, let me go see what people are doing. Let me work on the inspiration. I'll try to encourage people. But at some point I'm going to have to sit down and say, all right, here's day one of what I'm doing. Yeah. We're not there yet. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And, and honestly, so I was, so it's May now and I was in Hawaii in December with my boyfriend and I got this idea one day after meditating to uh, start a YouTube channel and to that really like YouTube was going to be a huge way of really sharing my message and sharing my business with the world and attracting, you know, like, like-minded people in and started it of course, cause I was excited and motivated mm-hmm. and, passionate. and then quite some weeks later in January stopped it. <laughs> and so I knew when I decided to do the hundred day project, I was like, Oh yeah, it's my YouTube channel videos every day for sure. So, you know, so it took me, you know, five months to come kind of full circle to be like, okay, yes, now I'm going to do it. So that's cool. It's cool to be in a space of, you know, still learning, growing, and just, you know, everything I journey through, I get to, you know, share that wisdom with my clients. So I, I have a, much greater appreciation for it. So if you you can explain what, what exactly is the hundred day project? I mean, is the, is it, you know, focused in a certain way or is this a wide open thing? Yeah. My understanding of the hundred day project is, you know, just, 
you know, choosing one thing that you'll be doing for a hundred days and it can be anything. So for me, I asked myself, like, what would really, you know, be the greatest contribution to my life and my goals right now? And definitely it was, you know, and also what's been in the gap. So what have I had trouble really being self committed on, you know? And so right away, the YouTube thing popped in, you know, if I had been maybe struggling with working out, it might've been that, you know, so there's Mm -hmm. people group. Uh, I know there's one gal who really struggles with consistent self-care. So that was her hundred day thing that she was going to, you know, journal every day and reflect upon what was working and not working. Uh, I know there's another lady in the group who's a podcaster and she's, you know, used as an opportunity to hold herself accountable for, you know, making some new relationships around her podcast. Um, I know that there is, uh, uh, someone in there that actually said like, I'm going to work on dunking for a hundred days, which actually I want to hear from him because I, <laughs> I'm curious, you know? So we're making the joke a hundred days to dunking. So really it's anything, you know, and I know there are a couple of people that openly shared that they weren't sure. And so I asked them, I was like, you know, one question I like to, you know, ask anyone that I work with or anyone I talk to is what if you approach this like a playful experiment? You know, I think a lot of times when people go to make a decision, they get really hung up in like what's going to be the perfect thing or the thing or the right mm. thing. And then they don't do anything. And then like, you know, months go by, years go by and still, you know, it's like a pattern in their life. And so, you know, I've shared with people like, what if you just pick something? Like, what if it was just fun? What if actually it wasn't about what you chose, but about actually like what's being cultivated in the process, which is discipline, commitment, accountability, things that like are going to, lead to any sort of success anyways for any kind of goals. And, and I really liked what you had just said because I find that to be so true, you know, amongst people and, and even myself, you know, that we do look for that perfection when the whole point of trying to improve your life is, is that, you know, you're not, you aren't perfect. Or else yeah. You wouldn't be saying I need to improve my life if we were already perfect. So, yeah. 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 So, you know, why worry about a perfect goal? Just, hit a goal. Absolutely. And I can only say that because I've fallen in that category so many times myself where I'm like, what's the one thing? And I'm like, wait, <laughs> there's no one thing. There's like a million, just choose one and, and move on with it and just have fun, you know? So, um, so that's been a fun shift to have. So maybe then my focus needs to be is find something fun and throw it down there and then at least be accountable for doing something like that uh, for the next hundred days. I think that would be a great idea. Mm. So we'll, we'll have to see by the time this podcast airs, what will I have something <laughs> on there? <laughs> yeah. Besides my, hey, everybody, this, this is who I am, but I haven't committed yet. Um, <laughs> so I'll talk about lame, but, you know, but hey, I'm here, you know, encouraging you guys. Yeah. Um, so uh, what, what would you say are, are some of the things that you've gleaned from, um, you know, looking at these posts that, uh, you know, some of the listeners here could maybe take with themselves, you know, to say like, you know, what, what can I do in my life to uh, either motivate me or, or to find some of that peace? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, motivation, you know, two words that you used, that you used popped out at me, motivation and peace. And even though I feel like from my point of view, they, they start in different places. I feel like they connect into a similar place. And so with motivation, you know, I have this saying that I made up and I'll censor myself for your podcast. Um, <laughs> Thank you. There's <laughs> can certainly fill in the words, but, and I made it because of myself, actually, it was years ago. And I said, when you get sick enough of your own stuff, you change. <laughs> <laughs> And mm-hmm. I, I made that saying up about five years ago because I noticed a pattern in my life that, you know, I would want to change. And then I kind of still talk to my friends about it. And then I would, I say, pretend to change. I'd make the choice, but I know very well that like, I wasn't really committed and I was going to backslide and that kind of thing. And then I'd finally get to a point of where I was like, all right, I'm tired of this. And it was just that moment where you know you're not going to look back. You know whatever challenges come up. You're like, you're just done with. You're larger than. Like the change just happened in that nanosecond. And so I noticed that pattern with everything I've changed in my life, like love, finances, emotional, you know, state, everything, that, you know, being sick and tired is a really powerful space to be in. So whether mm-hmm. someone's coming from that 
or whether they're coming from, you know, sheer inspiration, motivation. I think a lot of times, you know, and I've gotten into this lately that, and I say this being a very feeling woman, I'm very feminine. So feelings are huge for me, especially being intuitive. And I'm also at a point in my journey where always choosing from feeling like it has not served actually what I'm creating and the goals that I have in my life. So a new thing that I've been implementing that's been working really well is actually choosing from a space of my vision and what I'd like to create rather than do I feel like it. So therefore, not needing the inspiration, not needing the motivation. So if something's a part of my vision, like obviously I want it. And there's been things that have been part of my vision that like, I haven't felt like doing to get there. But like when I actually look at what I want to create, I really want to. And so my point of that is I think motivation and inspiration is great, but I also don't think that it's needed. And that choice is really, really powerful. And so, you know, just someone's choice to take that next step or to change something, you know, and, and begin down that journey is incredibly powerful. And then that leads into the peace because I always find that like when you're really honoring you and you're really in alignment with who you are, you can really lay down peaceful at night. You're going to sleep peaceful. Your soul's resting easy, you know, rather than, you know, which I've experienced that. And I've also experienced before, like definitely knowing that I'm selling myself short. I'm not taking as much action as I could or even as I desire. And then there's that kind of anxiety that you can kind of end up the day with because you know, like, wow, I'm never going to get this day back. And I just kind of like drifted with it. And that's actually not what I want. And so then- Mm -hmm that leads to obviously like not peace, you know, being very just uneasy. And so, you know, however someone gets started, whether it's motivation, inspiration, or just their choice, it leads that peace because when someone knows that they're doing their best and their best is going to look different each day, you know, and sometimes it looks like their best. Sometimes it might look like one step above the worst. (laughs) Um, There's a peacefulness that comes with that. And I think that's really powerful. Which I think brings us back to that whole thing of, you know, I I need to be honest with myself and in being honest with myself, there needs to be that level of self-love, you know, Mm -hmm. so it kind of all comes back around. Um, And and I do appreciate what you're saying about the motivation because, you know, not everybody feels motivated, but they know that they need to. And, you know, I think it's changing that perspective that, all right, well, great. You know what you need to do, but you're not motivated. So just head toward what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when I first, you know, when I first made that shift myself, I was like a little hesitant because I was like, does this mean I become disconnected and discount my feelings and like robotic, (laughs) you know, which, (laughs) which is something I obviously didn't want to embody. And what I realized is for me, it was still about honoring my feelings, still acknowledging them, still being very much in tune with them. But it almost feels like you have superpowers when you choose from this, I want to call it like a, like in a more elevated space of like, of, of your vision of that choice to move forward versus do I feel like it today? Cause I mean, if you're anything like me, there are just some days you don't feel like it. Like I will oh, yeah. down say that, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, the, the, there's many of those days. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, but in, in doing what we need to do and, and hopefully having that supportive community, I, I think really makes a difference, you know, and, and this way we, we don't have to rely on, you know, what is that perfection or, or, you know, when I get that motivation, then I'll start this new thing. But it, it seems when what you're saying is just what you need to do, just start it, just do it. Yes, absolutely. If there's one thing I'm super passionate about you know, besides everything I just shared, (laughs) is really, you know, reminding people that there is no perfect, there's no like exact moment, there's no like the right way, you know, there's so many different variations, any moment works, there is no perfect, I mean, perfect is the imperfect, you know, and Mm -hmm. and just being willing to, you know, have the support, you know, so like the benefit of the group is like, you know, I love it when people have been honest, and they've, you know, shared some things that maybe they before would have felt like shy about or embarrassed about, you know, because really, from my point of view, you know, I want to support people in 
releasing shame and guilt and judgment of themselves so they can really fly and really like share their gifts with the world and really feel great about themselves. I really feel like that would lead to just a global transformation. Right. And, and, and I will, I would agree if, you know, we really need to get people in, involved that way. And you know, that, that's the other thing I really like with this Facebook page because you can really reach so many people and hopefully they start to get that message. And then, you know, we really can affect change, uh, you know, locally and, and globally. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I always want to remind people that, you know, things can always change, you know, like I know for me, probably about five, five or six years ago, I was going through, I'd say like a mini dark night of the soul, like a lot of uh, spiritual uh, journeying and uh, a lot of challenges in my love life. So Friday nights were spent usually crying and listening to Gabby Bernstein lectures. And I didn't feel very, very, uh, I didn't see how my life would change. I just knew that it had to. Mm-hmm. And my sharing that is so many people buy into the lie, which is this is the way it's going to be, or it won't get better. And it's just not true. I mean, if there's one thing that your listeners get from this, you know, I really want to be that in this moment, if you truly choose just in your, you know, heart and soul that you're committed to having your life, you know, get better, be the best, whatever that is for you, life will start to take you in that direction. It really comes down to just choice. Even if you don't feel like it, even if you don't see an option, even if you feel like you're, you know, at your, you know, wit's end, it's really the choice of it's going to get better. And I don't know how, but it's just going to. And I say that because I've actually done that multiple times in my life. And it actually really has it's a really powerful space to be in. And, uh, and everyone gets to have that. Right. And, and that, that's really a good, I, I was going to ask you for like a summary. And uh, I, I think you just gave a, a really <laughs> perfect summary and encouragement, you know, of, uh, what people can do if, if they find themselves in, in these situations and are longing for a, a piece that, you know, that they really think they'll never get. Yes. I'd say the internet is your friend, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, connected to like-minded, you know, uh, people and, and groups. The reason why I say that is, you know, if you live in a small town or if you're in a, in a city to where you're like, there is no one here like me. Well, cool. Maybe not. But like with the internet, we don't really have any excuses for really connecting to people who are like us or will inspire us forward. So you like, you know, really just take that step in terms of like connecting to new people and starting to surround yourself with new things. And in, yeah, and, and just that can be definitely a, a big supportive part of it. Yep. Yeah, totally agree. And uh, that brings me back to, again, encouraging people to check out your Facebook page uh, because, right, that's where we can start to find like-minded people who can be very encouraging and, uh, you know, really help to get you, you know, to where uh, you really feel that you need to be. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it's on Facebook. Uh, It's the group's called The 100 Day Project. And, you know, my vision for that group is, it has thousands of people in it over time. I think right now we're about maybe at 50 or something. Um, and really, you know, it's like, you know, if someone wants to join, it's like, well, when does it start? And it's like, well, you can start whenever you want to, you know, and that's actually, you know, something that I'm also thinking about, like, you know, should I have like, you know, um, also some my official start dates for people, you know, that maybe are hesitant to start on their own, even though I'm already in it, but I just see it being ongoing because, you know, we all have different goals. They all look different. Right have a, a group and a community that supports, you know, cheering each other on is just really awesome. Uh, I agree. And, you know, it really could turn into where, you know, when somebody finishes that hundred days, well, what else do you want to start? Yeah. You know, now you're back to day one again on whatever your other new goal is or, or, you know, whatever you're working on. So, you know, it, it really could just be this ongoing thing that, you know, you, you just keep motivated and, and encouraged. Uh, you know, to keep doing a hundred days at a time. Absolutely. Yeah. So if people want to uh, get in touch with you or learn more about you or, you know, work with you, what's the best way that people can reach you? Yeah. So the best way right now is through Facebook and I'm on Facebook as the Natalie B 
and of course the 100 day project which is a facebook group you can look up and i pr you'll probably have some my maybe my my facebook link and instagram link uh maybe in the show notes or something i'm also on instagram as natalie underscore burridge um so yeah that's how they can get a, a in touch with me and connect it sounds excellent well i really want to thank you for taking the time to be with us and, and share with us and you know, really help us with the insights that you've gained in your life. And, and I really encourage people to, you know, check out, especially that a uh, hundred day project on Facebook. Um, but to really see all the things that you are involved with and what you're doing. And I uh, definitely appreciate the time that you took to be with us. Thank you, Chris. I absolutely love being on here and connecting with you about everything. So thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.